Alright, so I've got here today a version 6 Airsoft Gearbox. This one is my personal one out of my P90. Um, it's pretty far from stock, but in general the, the gearboxes don't change, so I'm going to be giving you some tips today on disassembly and reassembly. And these, these tips don't only apply to version 6s, you can use them for any gearbox type. So what you're going to want to have today, to or when you're disassembling your gearbox, you're going to want a few screwdrivers, of course. Um, if you have one, a mini screwdriver kit would be really useful for if there's any like star bit or torx bits required, you know, any specialty besides Phillips. Um, Although I don't think I have any on this one anymore. Um, you're going to want paper towels, of course, or a grease rag. A um, piece of paper. I'll show you why you need this later. Uh, as far as lubricants go, for inside the gearbox, like as you can see, there's like grease coming out. Um, the so-called specialty airsoft greases are really expensive and they're tiny as hell so what you can use um, you can pick up some white lithium grease from like a auto store and some mineral oil which you can get at the supermarket So, and hopefully if you're an airsoft player you'll have silicone oil but this is for cleaning rather than lubing Alright, so... Alright, so let's get on to disassembly. So, on the P90 gearbox, or the version 6s, um, the P90 configuration will have the motor coming out at a 90 degree angle from the gearbox. Um, this motor module you can disconnect it and that's the first step um, so you're taking out this screw and this screw, they're both Phillips and mine, I'm not sure what yours will be um, then we'll proceed to take out the Torx head screw and the second one and slide off the retaining rail cover or slide whatever So. Make sure you don't strip the or strip the screw heads on these. So make sure you use like the right screwdriver, right screwdriver size. All right. So as you can see, I got my motor module off. This is a first gen Sistema Turbo, um, long type, which is what the version sixes use. Um, I'm not sure what other ones use um, long type motors. They vary among gearbox types. I think um, version 3s, that, that's like MP5 G3s. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they use long types also, I think. So we'll set this aside, and if you have like a Dixie cup or whatever, just put your screws in there. Alright, so we have the gearbox itself now. Um, as you can see, the the guts are revealed when you take the motor off. Um, this is generally uh, generally true for most gearbox types, I think. Like, where you take the motor off first. Um, I haven't done version 2s and 3s in a while, so... Kind of rusty, but... So let's proceed to disassemble the gearbox. So, for, for the Torx head 
bits. You need to use a Torx head, obviously. Um. Alright, so let's move on to disassembling the gearbox itself. Um, so, I had to run and get a Torx bit, as you can see. So the contents of the gearbox are under pressure, because you have a high tension spring, which, which drives the gun, makes it shoot harder. So you're going to want to be careful when you're disassembling this. Um, I'll show you what to do to depressurize it properly, of course, because if you disassembled your gearbox on your own before and had it blow up, um, yeah, that's because you didn't hold the spring. So what we're going to do next, you're going to want to pinch the sides of the gearbox and slide your retainer plate off. I'm not sure the, what the technical term is for this, but we will just go with retainer plate. So right now the gearbox is loose and it will blow up if you just let it let it go. So what you want to do is get a screwdriver with a long neck, I think. And in the back um of your guide rod there should be a hole. So find a screwdriver that fits into the hole. So Here we go, I found a smaller one. So simply put this in the back and you're gonna wanna apply pressure this way to the, like, the left of the screen or into your gearbox and hold it down as you open it. Now lift, lift your screwdriver up and release your guide rod and as you see the spring came out and that's good, that's what we want because our gearbox didn't explode so now let's separate the two halves. <laughs> and so, as you can see on the left half of my gearbox, my grease is brown, like caramely. And that's that's not good, that's not what you want, you know. It, it happens though because grease decays as it heats and whatnot, so it's good to change it out every once in a while, so. Alright, I'm going to show you why I grabbed the piece of paper. So, there are three types of gears in the gearbox, right? There's your, your crown gear, your sector, and your spur. Um, what you want to do is have, have something that you can put down the shims on, which are the little spacers, the disc spacers. I'll show you that in a bit. So, you're going to want to do like left half of gearbox, right half. Alright, so we have our left half of our gearbox, um, and there are no shims on here, surprisingly. Um, typically, they'll stick to the bushings, which are these little metal, like the the holes that the axles actually spin in. So we'll take these out and sort them on the side. So you see here we have the spur gear. I'm not entirely sure what brand this one is even. Um, so we have one shim on our ovular bushing so we will put that on the left side because it was from the left half of the gear right and that's it's important that you remember where your um your shims were in respect to your gearbox 
um, like if you're taking it apart for the first time because if you shim the gearbox like improperly, um, your gears will grind and you'll end up breaking your gears or your piston, um, and it just won't sound as good. So it, it's actually a really important skill to learn. I'll teach you guys how to do that later. Uh, so we have our spur gear out. Um, let's just take the anti-reversal latch out. And for the right side, there are quite a few shims that were on the spur gear, so... I've got like three of them, because they're like... I have a separate set of, sh of shims there. Super thin. So we'll just put that in our spur section. Good enough. Alright, let's take out the sector gear. And so the sector gear is the thing that actually pulls the cylinder back. Um, hence the name sector because it's only half toothed. Alright, so on our left side we have two or three of them. It's really caked on so I can't really tell. And here's the importance of your paper towels, of course. Alright, so I got my other shim off, so I'll put that in my left side. And as far as right side goes, there's none on the gear, so we'll take them out of the bushings. And finally we have the crown gear, which attach or it makes the connection with the motor. It also has the anti-reversal um, sprocket system, I guess, which are these four teeth. Um, the anti-reversal latch will hold on to these, so you can't have it turned backwards, because you would break your gearbox if it did. Um, so, on the left side we'll separate these and it, be, it can be kinda difficult to separate them when they're like kinda caked on with lube like this so we've got two on there put on our left side And this is where your silicone lube will come in. Just you can use it to kind of like loosen the oil. So. Sorry for fumbling around with this. There we go, so it goes on our left side crown. And for our right side we have one stuck to this, this is, of course. As you can see the shiny part, that's not part of the gear, that's a shim. So I'll take our pliers again and You can even use like a knife to do this, but I don't have one on me, so... Well, I'm gonna 
gonna find a knife then. or something. All right, so worst case scenario, take your knife and scrape this off. Alright, so at this point I've taken out all the gears and put them on the side for now. Um, just so you guys don't need to fucking waste time watching me clean stuff. Uh, so, now we have the um, power assembly, I guess is what you would call it. It's like what drives the BB forward and like what actually loads the BB into the gun. So, the way you disassemble the piston and the cylinder set, you simply pop them up. Uh, and take your tappet plate off. And the tappet plate's the thing that holds your nozzle. This is actually like what physically loads the BB into the gun. It like goes like that. And so you have your cylinder and your piston assembly, so just pull them apart. Got I have a super core piston with a I think it was um I don't remember, it was like a Sistema palm head or something. Um stock stock cylinder, stock uh, cylinder head. So you can actually just pop the cylinder head off if you want. Just to make cleaning a little bit easier. Make sure you don't like break the tube or anything. Although it's doubtful it'll happen ever. So you can see my cylinder is pretty, it's pretty clean. There's a little bit of grease on there so we'll just clean this off. So with when you're cleaning your parts, um, you want to just get as much of the oil off as possible, or the grease, because no matter what type you use, like lithium or petroleum jelly even, like, don't really do that, but if it heats up, um, like which it does in the gearbox, you know, because of the movement, it'll start to decay and it'll lose its, like, lubricating properties, it'll just turn into crab cakes pretty much. I just want to clean it off well, you know. Um, inspect your air nozzle, make sure there's no gunk on the inside. Uh, just wipe off your cylinder. Clean out, you see that ring of residue? Just clean that out too. Just put that on the side. Um, we've got our cylinder head. As I said, this is a stock one. It's a Tokyo Marui. It's actually held up pretty well. This is a part you don't typically need to replace a whole lot, or pretty often. Um, the most common replacement on it is for like power upgrades, like um, if you want to increase the bore of your cylinder or something, you know, have more air going through. So let's clean this off. Shoot some oil onto here too. And the the silicone oil, it's it's good for breaking up like the thicker grease. But it's really bad on certain plastics. Um like ABS plastic, like on the outside of the gun, it'll melt your gun. So don't spray it directly onto your gun. Use it only in your barrel and be careful when you do that, you know. Alright, so this is eh, good enough for this video. Put that on the side. And we've got our cylinder head, or my bad, um, piston. So as you can see, this is obviously not a stock piston, it's a super core. These are like the, or at least advertised as the strongest pistons on the market. And they, they've held out pretty well for me. Um, it's it's a, it's a high quality piston and I mean like the teeth they're they're pretty quite they're strong I don't know sorry I got kind of tongue-tied there uh, 
So as you can see, like on mine at least, it's half steel, half, um, I don't know what it is, I think it's polycarb. But, yeah, so we'll just get our toothbrush, clean out the, the grooves. You just want to get, like, a lot of the cakes out. Um, and then for maintaining your piston head and piston, you're going to want to take off the o-ring on your piston head and shoot some silicone oil onto this. Get, you actually want to have this clean because um, if you have cakes on it, it'll prevent airflow and it'll actually make your gun cycle poorly, like in the drawback, because what it is is the o-ring, it like shrinks when it draws back to let air in, but I mean if there's shit blocking the way, air's not going to come in. So, clean this off too. Sorry, just trying to get all the grease out. Um, I'm just gonna shoot some grease in there, or shoot some oil. Yeah, so I mean, if you're looking to upgrade your gun, like, you wanna look into the best parts you can, or best parts you can afford, you know, and it'll, it'll definitely pay back in time, because, um, you know, the parts won't break, you don't need to replace them more, and your gun will actually perform better, you know. So, I mean, don't, don't skimp on upgrades, or upgrade parts, you know. It's not worth it. And the, these palm heads actually work pretty well. Um, these heads, they're, they're designed for, like, um, relatively high velocities on your gun, and, like, high cyclic rate, like high rate of fire. Um, but they're they're hard plastic, like they're or composite. I'm not really sure what it is, but you know, they're quiet when they hit. So your gun will actually cycle much like quieter, I guess. Much more quietly. Something. So make sure you get all the grease out of the the grease grooves, which is actually what they are. And let's put this on the side, this is done. And um, on the gearboxes behind the tappet plate, you'll have a spring. It goes here actually. It's to push the push the tappet plate back forward because like during the cycle it goes like this. And loading like in loading the BB. I mean if my fingers is the barrel it goes like that. So you want to make sure you don't lose this. This is super important. Your gun won't load if you lose it. And so we have our guiding rod. You can get a bunch of different types of these. This is a brass one. Uh, my friend put it in there, like when I asked him to do work on it. Um, the stock guiding rods are typically plastic, and they're they're okay, it's not a part that makes a huge difference, but I mean, if it snaps, you know, it'll destroy your gun practically. And, like, you can get guiding rods with, like, uh, O-rings on here, or washers, you know, that rotate, just so the spring doesn't, or so it compresses easier. Um, I have a, I think this is a Prometheus, I think, a 120, so my gun's shooting, like, 400, about. So let's just move on to cleaning the sides, so easiest thing, take your paper towel, wipe the grease off. I don't think I need to make a tutorial for this. So what you actually really want to get clean here is in these side portions, like your corners, just like scrape the scrape the gunk out, because that's where the the gears actually run, so you don't want anything like obstructing it. And if you can see here, there's these grooves, these are called gre uh, grease grooves. What you do is you actually lubricate in there, and it'll spread out on the piston because of those like notches on it. 
So you want to get this clean too. Yeah, you don't need to use as much silicone as I do, but I mean, this is pretty caked on, so I'm gonna just do it for for the hell of it. The toothbrush is actually super caked already. So just do that for both sides. Um, and it helps if you remember what side your bushings are actually on, so I mean, I'd recommend leaving them in the shell. But if you end up taking them out, make sure you remember what side, because, you know, nothing nothing is really manufactured perfect, so it could affect your shimming space. So, you know, if you had it set perfectly before, if you change your bushings around, you'll just throw that whole thing off, and you can end up just having, having it run poorly, and very very worst case scenario it'll break so all right so that's that's mostly clean this is pretty half ass for me but it is mostly clean like i said and that concludes the disassembly i'll show you how to reassemble this